Welcome to Sweet and Sour. I'm Sweet. No, I'm Sweet. <laughs> See what I did to you? I know. I know. Anyway, uh, I, Brian is going to maybe hold back on the talking a little bit. He's got a bad throat. We're in San Antonio, Texas for the launch of the GLE. And uh, Brian, in a few short words, what would you say to describe how much new content there is in this GLE? 100% totally new and this is the highest tech vehicle I've ever driven, period. There is so much stuff to talk about. We could literally be going for half an hour covering all of the information that's in this. So well, how do you want to do this? You want to start on the outside and work in? Sounds good. And you're going to do most of the talking, so okay. go ahead. All right, bigger. The uh, the GLE is bigger. This um, this uh, SUV is made in the United States. The, uh, the ML, the previous name, uh, started back in 1997, right? That's right, and of course, bigger means it's also stiffer. Yeah. It's a new platform. It's longer. Yeah. And more room. And they have, for the first time, the ability to order this vehicle with a third row of seats for two extra passengers, really only for kids. But I think some people will go for that because the step up from this is to go to a GLS, and that is that's a lot more money. So you know, on the occasion that you need to take extra kids to soccer or whatever that will be attractive to some people for sure. So it's bigger, it's uh, 80 millimeters longer in the wheelbase, over 100 millimeters longer overall, and I think it looks great. What do you think? It looks really good, especially you can get uh, wheels up to 21 inch, 22, or 20, 22 inch. Yeah. but the, the 21, you get staggered wheels. You get staggered wheels and the wheel arches are flared out a little bit with some plastic add-ons and it really makes this look uh, good. Now, um, so that's the outside. I think the styling is really strong. It looks like an ML, but it's thoroughly modern and uh, sleek looking. Plus, you get two new engines now, right? We're actually driving the base engine now. The base engine currently is the twin turbo six cylinder. Now, they have a turbo four cylinder in a vehicle of this size. And I thought to myself, this isn't going to be very good. 255 horsepower and 270 something pound feet of torque. On a in a big vehicle, this is a, not a small vehicle at all. But it's lighter than the previous version. And you know what? Uh, now driving it, you put it in sport mode. It's actually pretty good. And the overwhelming thing about this new GLE, whether you get this six cylinder or you get this four cylinder, it's very quiet. Really quiet. They've they've increased the welds on everything. They've done so much work. Uh, giving you a, a premium luxury experience and there's no artificial acoustics in, involved in no it. there's no acoustic uh, can noise cancelling or anything all the mounting points for the suspension are these large cast aluminum pieces to make the vehicle very rigid so now that they have this new rigid longer bigger platform they have oh uh, uh, before we get to that uh, another the other engine the inline six is back mercedes-benz has gone away from the uh, uh oh, I just said Mercedes Benz. Now the assistant wants to That's ask. All right. yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay, cancel. Okay, she canceled. Um, so what they've done is gone back to an inline six cylinder away away from a V6, and now you get a three liter turbocharged with uh, 364 horsepower. I think 362. 362. So that's a, that's a great uh, advancement, in my opinion. I love inline six cylinders. So um, because they have this more rigid platform, we talked about all that stuff, they have three new suspensions. And the, the, the great thing about coming to these programs, there are almost more engineers than there are journalists. And there's, if, there's a, if you want to talk to the guy that designed this, he's there, right? They spent six <laughs> years on the suspension. Six years doing the suspension. So the base suspension is uh, regular steel springs, then you go up to the air suspension, that's the one we're driving now, and then you go up to what, Brian? You get an E-active body control. Yeah, and what it does is it has the air billows and it has uh, a 48 volt system that is used to use a hydraulic system. So it's hydraulics and it's air billows to have the vehicle move up and down up to 16 centimeters in travel for off-roading. But it also has this cool party trick they showed us. Jump, jump. It jumps up and down. So the vehicle can actually jump up and down and this is useful for places where they have sand and it can help uh, when, when the vehicle's moving up, uh, put sand underneath the wheels and dig itself out. Pretty cool. And I think it's going to be used by 
the LA crowd. They're going to tune it. They're going to do something. Well, you need some software to do that. Like yeah. The one that we saw was not modified mechanically, but it had a different program to yeah. it. They obviously, uh, they obviously put an extreme program on it. But talk about the curve. Oh, yeah. Then um, they have a curve feature when you get the air suspension and that E uh, active body uh, control system. Um, it's, it's got the ability, like, you know when you, when you ride a bicycle or a motorcycle and you lean into the corner? Uh, when you're going around a corner. This vehicle also does the same thing, up to three degrees. So when you're going around a corner, the body actually turns. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit different at first, but um, I don't know. Is it, is it a gimmick, do you think, or is it actually worthwhile? Uh, I'm, How much is it going to cost? Yeah, it all depends. It all depends. I can see applications for it, for sure, you know, and it's not for everyone. So uh, we don't have a price for that here in North America yet. Uh, now the engineers are telling us it's about a 6,000 euro price difference to get that in the European market, so it's not going to be a cheap option. But that's, it's pretty cool. And, and if you lived on a twisty country road, eh, might, might want to go for it if you could afford it. So inside, it's got everything, everything. So there, like Brian said at the beginning, there's so much technology in this vehicle. It's the, it's the single most technologically advanced launch I've ever been on, right? Everything is new with this. So you get the MBUX, the Mercedes-Benz User Experience. That's the whole glass panel dash. We saw it in S-Class. We've seen it in E-Class. It's now in A-Class and now in this um, GLE. But you can also offer what are called gesture controls. The way you move your hand across the dash, it's not like uh, BMW that has the, you know, turn the volume up and turn the volume down. It's nothing like that. You put your hand up, and this car doesn't have it, by the way. You put your hand up and, uh, sorry, up here, and then the lights come on. Uh, things like that. You you put your hand towards the screen and it knows whether it's the passenger or the driver. So if I want to adjust my seat, it knows it's me. If Brian wants to do it, then he can do it. Right? It's so intuitive and it does things that you would actually normally do. Like if you're reaching into the glove box at nighttime or to your seat, maybe grab your jacket, it knows and it turns the light on for you. And uh, by the way, when you said S-Class, the MBUX is not in the S-Class. The screens, the are, screens are, but right. the, the system is only A class and the GLE right now. Right, right. So the screens, as I'm referring to, the big, the big 12.3 inch screens are in those cars. But this is the new MBUX. So there's ways to use it. You have thumb pads on the steering wheel. So the left one is for the instrument cluster. The right one's for the center con. The uh, the, the center screen, you have the trackpad here, and it's a touch sensitive system as well. Lots of ways to, to use it, and you can use voice commands. It's very, very quick too, and, and haptic feedback. Okay, so for example, we'll say, uh, hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Set the temperature to 70 degrees. I'm setting the temperature to 70 degrees. Perfect. Getting a nice heated massage right now. Oh yeah, so we talked about, um, the the engineers worked on the suspension for six years they started uh, the engineering for this vehicle about five years ago so different components at different times the lady that worked on the massaging seats as a physiotherapist i think that's her background she's been working on these massaging seats for eight years <laughs> it's incredible and uh so yeah you have massaging seats in other cars but these ones apparently are next level there, there's so many different programs that you can do on them, and they're and they're fairly strong. Oh, we got some emergency. Emergency vehicles. Now there's some other technology for that. Apparently, it can get away, get out of the way for emergency vehicles or something like that. I saw on, on a slide in, a, yeah. in the presentation, but not quite sure about that. There's so much technology and safety and, and stop and go stuff. There's an accident up here, unfortunately. Yeah, we're stuck in a traffic. Oh here. no. Oh man. I guess people are so brain dead, you know. Like, did you not see that there was a fire truck wanted by? Rampart, station 51, engine 51. We have an emergency. By the way, we're in San Antonio, Texas, and it's cold and raining here. And they totally didn't expect this at all. It's cold. Like, we got here and we're like, wow. Yeah. Uh, we're expecting, you know. You went and bought a down jacket, even. And bought a down jacket. <laughs> I didn't. I'm not wearing it now. 
Okay, so uh, M, uh, while we're stuck in this traffic jam, yeah, massaging seats, the Mercedes Benz, user experience, and then just the overall finish in here is uh, is pretty good. I I'm disappointed in the bottom of the door cards here are back to hard plastic, and they had the uh, one of the interior designers, and I said, "What's with that?" And he goes, "I know, I know, I know. We had to we had a big long debate about that." And I said, "That's a step backwards. You used to have the soft panels on the bottom." And uh, he, he kind of admitted that they wish they didn't have to do that. I'm not sure why. Obviously, a cost savings of some kind. I don't, I don't mind them so much. I just think that they're huge, though. They're so wide, yeah, you know. <coughs> now, speaking of big, back seat is huge. Very comfortable. Lots and lots and lots of head and leg room. No problem there. You know what this reminds me of? Not in looks or design, but in size. It's similar to the new Q8, the new Audi Q8. The back seat in that vehicle is huge, and this one kind of reminds me of that, in in terms of size. Yeah, is the Q8 larger? Well, it's based on the Q7 platform, yeah. but just a little short. But I'm saying the back seat mm -hmm. is the back seat feels like that. All right, and then uh, what other technology? Inline six cylinder, turbo four cylinder, nine speed automatic transmission. Um, you obviously standard all wheel drive in Canada, and uh, what else? MBUX. Um... Oh, 48 volt system. So if you get the inline six cylinder engine, you get the 48 volt system. So what it does is it, it can um, save energy into a fairly small lithium ion battery pack. It helps power things like the air suspension. It has a more active uh, auto start stop, which is, turns it off more often. And it gives mild electrical boosts at low speeds, right? There's so many little things that they've added onto this vehicle. It's so much technology that, you, like you said, it'll take forever. But like right now, it's raining out. It just reminds me of the wipers. Their wiper system for the washer now not only is it heated, mm -hmm. the the washer fluid comes out of the wiper, mm -hmm. which is good. Mm -hmm. So you save some fluid that way. But it also it actually uh, analyzes your speed you're going and everything. To, to determine how much fluid to actually pump out so you don't waste a lot of fluid. Then you get into the safety stuff, the stuff you don't see, and uh, this has the ability to have um, the sort of autonomous driving at lower speeds. Mm -hmm. So um, you can use it in stop and go this city traffic. It. Oh, does it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you put it on, like we should put it on now? Yeah, put it on. Put it, put it on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. Just oh, 15 miles. Okay. Okay. Oh, it says I have to have my hands on the steering wheel. But no, 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 you got the green, you got the green. So as soon as we start moving, just get it started and then let go, and we'll see. And it uh, has the ability to not only follow the lane in front, but the lane beside. In situations like this, where it's bumper to bumper traffic, the cameras and the sensors have the ability to detect lanes and up to two lanes wide. And when we when you stop, like we are right now, a lot of other ones, the older systems, after like three seconds, when you start moving, you have to actually engage it again. again. This one, I believe up to 60 seconds after you stop, it'll still work. See? Look at this. See, is it going to go? I'm pushing the gas. Oh, going. you are? There, now. It must be far enough away. Now it goes. Okay, now it's moving. Well, what I like about the Mercedes-Benz system is it, like, some, some of these systems, uh, the car in front will move, and then the car will lurch forward really quickly yeah. and then jam on the brakes again. This one's very progressive. It's like you would typically drive. So take your hands off. Okay. Take your hands off. So your hands are off, <clears throat> pedals off. Yeah. Okay. Just let it do its thing. Let us do its now thing. Now you're all about this. I love it because most people aren't driving for enjoyment. They have to drive to get somewhere on for a commute, work. a yeah. commute. And a lot of us have to drive in stuff like this and stop and go traffic for hours a day. Yeah. And this is the best thing. Seriously. Actually, the, um, the, the head of PR for Mercedes-Benz Canada on this trip, she spends three hours a day in her car, an hour and a half to and an hour and a half from work every single day. And she drives a GLS. That's insane. Yeah. That's so insane. the people do that, right? Okay, we came to a full stop yep. and the car in front started and I didn't have to hit it. Now I can see, I can see where you live and this is your life, right? Yeah, yeah. this is good. This is comfy. See, I live this in the middle good. of the city. I, I never really have this. And it's not that you're, you're, you want autonomous driving that you, you're going to read a book or something. Just the fact that it's just a lot less stress. There's a lot of stress in, in, in stop and go traffic. Not now, because I got the seat heaters. Yeah, I, know. I got the massager going. going. The car's doing the driving. I'm looking at this beautiful interior. I have to put up with you, but. Yeah, well, at least you don't have to listen to me much. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, there literally is 
all the all the advanced safety features that are involved in this is just next level. They they took all of the stuff they were already doing and they just made them more robust and more stable and uh, incredible car. Yeah, it really is. And unfortunately, no no pricing at this point, but uh, hopefully so. My only issue is with the air suspension. I find this car a little too soft for my taste. I would like to try, and we haven't had a chance today, to try the passive shock absorber mm -hmm. because that floaty air thing isn't my jam. I like a little bit more connected. Even with the curves, uh, the e-active suspension, even then it's still a little soft for my taste. Yeah, for you, 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 have, you have a stiffer taste though. Yeah, but what's surprising me is the Turbo 4. I always thought coming into this, eh, People should go right to the six. Now that I've driven it, it's worth your time. Yeah, it's actually, and it's not as loud or buzzy no. as, as, as the previous two liter turbo no. engines. So. Is that a wrap? That's a wrap. I'm not gonna do the hand thing. I'll give you a hand bump. That's another edition of Sweet, Sweet and, and Sour. sour. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.